This is a Lego brick. It's a piece that can become a spaceship or the biggest ship in the seas. Something small to play with or something monumental. Lego is satisfying throughout the entire process, at each step along the way and at the end of the journey when we see where we've gotten. It's the perfect example of what all human endeavor can be like. But recently, we've noticed ourselves being pulled away from the engineering and creation that we love into a strange direction and getting sucked into an endless loop of chasing the next new thing. And shopping for new stuff is just not what we want to love about LEGO. So to try to reset, over the last couple months, we've been trying to dive deep into what we find delightful about sets we know and love. Today, we're gonna to follow the path of one of our favorite LEGO designers, design master Mike Seki. We've covered five of his sets, all excellent in an earlier video, but today we're going to dive into our three favorite sets of his, Galaxy Explorer, Titanic, and Yellow Racers. First up, Galaxy Explorer 10497. This was actually the set that got us obsessed with Mike Psyche in the first place. We thought that the draw of the set was its callback to classic space and that we wouldn't get it, but we were wrong. It's so good. And it gave us a chance to explore space and time and the past and future of everything. For this set, Mike Seiki made instructions for building three spaceships. We're going to start by following the main spaceship, which carries four astronauts all the way through. Even the nearest star to us after the sun is four light years away, so Galaxy Explorer needs to be super solid to make the journey. We rough out the angles of the ship underneath with angled plates. Then we build a stylish, clean feature, three-point retractable landing gear. Each of the three feet uses a tiled base from the Super Mario sets, so it's two plates thick at the corners and one plate thick in the middle. This allows it to fold in flush with the body of the craft, so it blends right into the bottom of the wing. Then another fresh touch, how the fuselage is built. The entire blue fuselage is built at a slant, with this angle at the front, which attaches to the Technic pinhole to make this sleek, subtle incline. We start attaching the wings, and check out these retro colors inside the body. The edges of Galaxy Explorer are built with these long hinged assemblies, with lots of stud on the side attachment points. And then there are these really neat snot brick plus stud with bar assemblies that then lock these in. And the edges are finished with these cheese slopes on rails, and 2x4 tiles very satisfyingly. We do the same thing with the wings, to make this nice chamfer underneath the leading edge. And we use a similar hinge angled line to build the front of the ship and attach again with the stud with bar pieces, chamfer the edges, close the gap, and add the nose guns. And when the rest of the body plates are added, you can see how we get this overall shape of straight, studless wing edges fitted at perfect angles to a studded angled body. And then we just place the 8x16 tile here, not attached with any studs. We'll see it later. Thanks to some extraordinary thinkers, we know that everything in the universe has expanded from a single point almost 14 billion years ago. The universe begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. About 13.8 billion years ago, at time zero, the universe begins as an infinitely hot and infinitely dense point. At time equals 1, 10, million, billion, 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 billion of a second, the temperature and average energies are so high that even subatomic particles can't form, and quantum gravity is the reigning force. At time equals 100,000, billion, billion, billion of a second, the universe goes through a growth spurt, increasing in size exponentially fast to the size of a grapefruit. At one millionth of a second after the Big Bang, the universe is an ocean of quarks, the elementary particles that will make up protons and neutrons. At one second after the Big Bang, the quarks finally condense into protons and neutrons, together called hadrons, the building blocks of atoms. And after about 15 minutes, protons and neutrons start sticking together and forming the nuclei of the lightest chemical elements, hydrogen, helium, and lithium. It finally cools down enough for electrons to combine with protons to create the first atoms. And then we build the back of the fuselage with a different angle, same as the gray slopes in front. And these are sleeping quarters. You can see they have a two stud long by four plate wide by two plate high hole for each astronaut's air tank, so they can sleep with their air tanks on. By the way, the tilting of the fuselage lets us use a printed tile instead of a printed slope, which makes the print a little crisper. And look, here are the two angles of the front and back parts of the fuselage meet perfectly at this point. Whoa. There's this elegant and extremely snotty airlock door with upside down and sideways bricks used to make jutting out places to mate with rails at top and bottom. I didn't know there were rails that slide over studs. 
and I didn't know you could use an inverted cheese slope in the other kind of rail. And then it gets placed at an angle that gets made by the pivot point at the Technic pins. What? And then the pièce de résistance. We build this funny assembly with one by one with bar holder. The back-to-back -back canopies that we've been building toward this whole time. And all this geometry flows together to create this sleek shape with super clean lines. And look at this! The front fuselage being built at a slant means that it can see all four astronauts, with all four having excellent forward visibility. Ingenious. There are these nice brick-built arrows on the sides of the back doors, but with Nexo Knight's tiles. And there's this satisfying clip in the back. The first half here, then the other half, and the snap closed. The detachable wing engines can be used as space scooters, which is a cute and fun surprise. And the brick-built thrusters with the bucket pieces is really inspired. And here's our 8x16 tile again. Turns out that it's a sliding ramp to get our vehicle in and out. The way everything in this build all comes together is so satisfying to experience. And when you're tired of playing with the Galaxy Explorer, you can take it apart and build the B and C models for you and a friend or just you. It's really amazing and completely unexpected that this is also a 3-in-1 that can be built into a space transporter or a one-person spaceship, both of which look good enough to be a set on their own. This set is made so that you can build and rebuild it for the rest of your life, grow up with it or grow old with it. Also, while we were filming this, our friend Jack let us have his original 483 Alpha 1 rocket base from 1979 to build, so we can refuel the Galaxy Explorer. Galaxy Explorer is an amazing set. We thought it was perfect, but then we met a different level of perfect. The Titanic! Best Lego ever! This is the size of a person. This is the size of their first class room. This is the size of their dining room. And this is their boat. The RMS Titanic. The ship was about 270 meters long. So this Lego model, which is 1 to 200 scale, is 135 centimeters long. It's huge, but very sturdy with heft and strength. When it came out, it was so expensive. We thought we would just spend our entire lifetime's Lego budget and be done. It really shows perfection at all scales. It's a masterclass in expert building, molding shapes together effortlessly that seem impossible to. And we figured we can finally share all our Titanic facts too. When the RMS Titanic set sail on its first and only voyage, it was the largest man-made moving object that had ever been made. It embarked on Wednesday, April 10, 1912, from the port of Southampton, England, and after stopping in Cherbourg, France, and Cove, then Queenstown, Ireland, was carrying 2,200 passengers and crew bound for New York City. We started out with a full course on LEGO geometry. The hull has to expand from being a point at its front to 18 studs wide at its widest point, so there are all sorts of techniques in this set to build the different triangles and curves that join together to form the scaled shape. We start attaching the curved surface of the ship to the studs on the side. In here we build a second triangle that will go above the first one with the same angle but different techniques, leaving more studs on the side for later. There were 20,000 bottles of beer on board, 1,500 bottles of wine, and 8,000 cigars, all for the use of first-class passengers. On board, there was also a gym, pool, Turkish baths, a kennel for first-class dogs, and two really nice staircases. There's this neat anchor assembly made with hot dogs that slides into a well at the front. The Titanic's anchor weighed 16 tons and needed 20 extremely strong horses to haul it. And the studs we left out on the sides earlier form these attachment points for these carefully sculpted sides. And you can see this stud on the boat's right is green for starboard, and on the left is red for port. There's this perfectly scaled forward anchor crane built with bar holders with handle pivoted to the correct angles. And the bridge built with snot from where the Titanic was steered and where the last hard turns to starboard and port happened. And we start installing the davits for lifting the lifeboats on the boat deck and building the lifeboats with sideways slopes. Unfortunately, there were only 16 lifeboats and four collapsible rafts on the Titanic on this voyage. They'd built the ship to hold up to 64, but the White Star Line wanted the first-class promenade decks to not look too cluttered with lifeboats. The captain had also cancelled a lifeboat drill the morning before the disaster, so the passengers weren't familiar with the ship's evacuation procedures. Here's some feet. And you can see the sculpting, tapering front to middle and bottom to top to make this seamless shape. 
And the strip of bright light orange trim, created with plates and printed curve slopes at the very front, looks so crisp. Now we're on the second of three sections of the boat. At the bottom, we see one of the Titanic's coal bunkers, which look small here, but are actually three stories high. And notice this Lego hole diameter tunnel we're building over to the left. Looks like a nice attachment point for later. And we see this pattern of building up vertical supports with horizontal cross braces to lock them together. And here's the swimming pool, located on F deck next to the Turkish bath. In the wreck today, the pool is still full, sealed off by a watertight door. And across from that is, according to the floor plan, the to be a linen's drying room where dirty bedding was stored. Titanic didn't actually do laundry on board, that's for when it gets to New York. And we start to see some plush interiors, sleeping quarters with white tiles as beds divided by door pieces, and common areas with one by one quarter tiles and studs as seats and tables. And then there's the beautiful tiling at the top. We build this skylight over one of the grand staircases, though we don't see the staircase itself here, and a couple more vents with the telephone handset piece in white. Look at the way that all the gaps are covered and how these arched doors are subtly inset. It's a work of art. The railings on this ship are made with white bars and sometimes tubes, which looks quite elegant. This is a really special scale, and the mini builds are super delightful. Check out the parts used here to build a bench for our friends to sit on. In the next subsection, we get more interiors and see a representation of one of the two grand staircases where romance occurs. We get these beautifully checkered tiled floors and pearl gold accents. Look at how these windows are built with 1x2 Technic bricks with hole, and these windows are built sideways with bricks and plates. And these posts are built with faucets. Stairs are built all over the ship with the one by two by two thirds slope with grill piece, which looks really nice and so tiny and cute. There's the compass tower here with another grill slope as its side stairway. And look at the way the funnels are built and placed in at a slight angle. Mike Psyche designed a mechanism in the hull with Technic pinholes that are just slightly offset to create the correct angle. And we use string to hold it down, just like the stays that held the funnels down on the real Titanic. And then we join the two parts of the second section, give it feet, and now we have the second third of the boat. Which means that we get to see how the parts of the ship connect. There's this special Technic Plus System Bricks lollipop key that's made sturdy with snot, and it also includes two built-in telephone vents. We just slide it into the connecting tunnels we built, and the two parts are locked together, and you can't see the connection from the outside. Beautiful. And now we're at the stern of the boat, which means more angles. Here we built Titanic's single turbine engine, which used leftover pressure from the two reciprocating engines to drive the central propeller. We also start building the axles for the two other propellers. We're never going to see this turbine again, but we know it's here. Sculpting with curved slopes again attached sideways. And more cute and doomed furniture. Look at the snot build under the bench. It's exactly the right size to slot in vertically and perfectly fill the gap. One last set of angles for the aftmost section, where we'll be adding the three propellers. We build up these elegant dark red propeller axles, alternating two L axle connectors and axles. And look, here's Tiago. And now we add the central propeller, and just behind it, we start building the Titanic's gigantic rudder assembly. Titanic's rudder was so large, 78 feet high and 15 feet long, that it required steering engines to move it. Though there is some debate as to if it were even larger, if that could have saved the Titanic. And after a bunch more building, we attach the sides of the stern and they come together perfectly at this angle. The tip of the stern is sculpted with studs above and in front, with angled and curved slopes. And it snaps in upside down with these two ball joints. There's more angled edging that snaps in with bars and clips, And we finish building these sleek black portholes. There are hundreds in the build, made of 1x2 round plates layered with minifigure neck brackets. The rooms with portholes are mainly for the second and third class passengers, and are closer to the bottom of the ship. When the Titanic was sinking, as some people from these decks were trying to escape, they found the doors to the higher levels locked. In all, only 25% of the third class passengers survived, compared to 41% of the second class passengers and 62% of the first class passengers. There are more cute stairs and railings. 
And then there's this extremely satisfying hinged curve for the stern of the boat, though with alternating white and bright light orange hinge plates, plus layers of plates and jumper plates and Technic bricks. And these articulate perfectly to have these two bars snap in at the correct distances to these clips exposed on the ship. Really excellent work. And that also completes the windows on the ship, so we can see how they all look. Then we build the last of the cargo cranes and the cargo hatches. And the stern mast. This assembly is the docking bridge. But one more thing, we get these working Technic engines built to be Titanic's two triple expansion reciprocating engines. They're totally custom built and use Technic piston parts and barrel pieces on top. They're extremely large and powerful. In total, between these two engines and the turbine engine we built earlier, Titanic was registered as having 50,000 horsepower, allowing for a speed of about 22 and a half knots. And look at this. We place them into the boat and they connect up perfectly with the propellers we built 220 steps ago. These propellers, at Titanic scale, were each 23 and a half feet in diameter and weighed around 15 tons. And this Technic gear adjusts the tension of the rigging. Just look at Mike Psyche's mastery of the LEGO medium, and what we can do if we dare to go off the square grid. Look at all these pieces coming together perfectly. It's impressive as a whole, and in each of the small parts. And one last lollipop, and that's the full body of the ship. But unfortunately, the Titanic only reached this point, where it ran into an ice field that was much further south than usual due to an anomalous weather pattern in 1912. So we thought that was it. We built Titanic, we're all done with LEGO, that was perfect. But then, Tiago Caterino, YouTube star and LEGO designer, and Mike Psyche, LEGO design master, both suggested getting set 31023. And approximately one hour later, we had ordered one from Bricklink. 31023 Yellow Racers is a creator 3-in-1 that uses the same set of 328 pieces to build three different vehicles. A helicopter, a race car, and a catamaran. But more than that, this set is a snot masterclass in a distilled compact form. And it's a third flavor of Perfect. So let's go. We're not certain how the design process goes at LEGO, but we imagine it as starting with Mike Psyche walking around, looking at the pieces, and then... Brackets? Brackets. Plates with hole. Plates with two clips horizontal. Plate with bar. Clip wrench. Clips on plate. Bars on both sides of the wings. Headlight bricks, handle, clips on plates, plate with two clips, inverted bracket, two brackets, cheese slope. Jumpers, plate with clip, plate with clip. Whoa, inverted brackets, cheese graters attached to brackets, snot bricks, left and right, red and green, slopes attached to snot bricks, headlight bricks with round stud, bar on plate, plate with pinhole, bar on plate. Whoa! Look at how the tail locks in. And now we have a helicopter. And the engines also locking. In a helicopter like this, the main rotor exerts a rotation force that the rear rotor opposes by pushing the tail in the opposite direction. And its wings help stabilize it if it's flying around close to the ground and while it's hovering. This kind of helicopter is great for very low altitude flying. But then... So much snot. Locking. And now we have a second model that looks just like a Formula One race car, but with an enclosed canopy. The contouring from all the snot techniques gives us this beautiful car with air scoops and front and rear wings. And then we get a handsome catamaran with two hulls and two engines. It has a sleek and low profile so we can power under low bridges and the two hulls should give us a smooth and stable ride. So is there such a thing as a perfect experience? The reason we wanted to show you all these, especially Yellow Racers, is this. It's easy to look at the LEGO releases like we look at the progress of history and say, well, they just get better. 
over time. But that's not quite right in either case. If you take a closer look, it's people as individuals and in team that make things get better, that do novel and creative work and change the state of the art actively with specific projects in spurts, not just gradually over time. And that's what Mike Psyche has done for us here. Look at Yellow Racers. It's a tiny set, but it's really changed the state of the art in LEGO snot techniques. And you can see the difference between the LEGO techniques that existed before it was released in 2014 and those after its release. And Galaxy Explorer and Titanic are much newer, so we haven't even seen what their effects might be. With all of these, we start out by asking, what? That can be done with LEGO? And then the next day it's like, oh, obviously that can be done with LEGO. And then what next? Which is how all human progress is made. If you want to see more building techniques, check out this video. And we'll see you next time.